What's going on, Internet? How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Chu. I'm a Bay Area photographer and filmmaker, and this is going to be part two about pricing, specifically about commercial photography. But in this specific video, I'm going to break up the information that I could be in a two part video because I want to leave room at the end of this video to do a Q&A on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me at who's Chris Chu for more information and for more like, I don't know, my photography content or whatever to stay up to date. But today we're going to be talking about commercial photography pricing. If you haven't watched part one of my advice on pricing, there's a little card up here uh, for the other video. I su really suggest you watch that before you watch this one, but let's get down to it. All right, tip number one for pricing commercial photography is to never price on effort, but to price on usage. Never on effort, always on usage. For example, if I give you a pair of white sneakers right now, and I said like, hey, can you take one pretty image of this? and uh, you go and do it it's like wow that only took me 20 minutes so how much would you charge for one image that took 30 minutes all you had to do was just set up a couple lights here and there throw throw the white shoe against like a black backdrop and it was like really easy uh in lightroom it was super simple you just have to adjust contrast and all this other stuff maybe remove a couple blemishes how much do you charge for that in your head or maybe gut reaction for most people is to say like mm, because it was so easy maybe like 100 bucks 150 bucks you look at the shoe, it's like, mm, it's all right, like maybe $300 max. Maybe that will be my ceiling. What happens if I was the one that made the shoe? You would say like, oh, mm, I mean, 300 bucks still seems like reasonable for it because I don't want to overcharge me as a client because it only took me 30 minutes. What happens if the company Common Projects was the owner of that shoe? Would you charge them more? If $300 is your ceiling still for the same thing, then you are making a huge mistake. And here's where I want to talk about a very important thing about pricing and in business in general. Emotions are interlaced in all of our art as photographers, as videographers, as artists in general. Like that's the thing that like fuels our creativity and why we feel the way we feel when we make these like pieces of work. But when it comes to business, you have to be able to remove emotion away from pricing, remove emotion away from the effort. Because if you price based off of your effort, say like it didn't take me that long. That's a very emotional thing. And I know it's really difficult to do that. And it's like, come starts to like qu make you question your ethics. Like what gives me the right to charge this person $3,000 versus this person $300 when it's the same exact image that took the same amount of work. In this specific genre of photography, you have to price on a sliding scale. And this probably only works for commercial photography because if you do it for portrait sessions, or family shoots or weddings that's kind of scummy and people will eventually like talk about like the way you price like you price higher for higher income uh people versus like lower income people and like it could possibly work for you but um there could be like a lot of uh, repercussions of that so for commercial pricing i highly suggest doing sliding scale because you have to realize like what is the value of this image to this specific client like for me like what am i going to use it for instagram i'm going to use it for my facebook i could maybe like share it to friends like it's not going to go that far the the reach and the potential of me making money off of this image is a lot lower versus a company like common projects that is a more established company that has a marketing team that knows how to monetize the asset that you gave them so you have to ask the clients again this varies from client to client what is the usage of this is it going to be um for web use is it going to be for your website is it going to be for your social media strategy is it going to be printed out and where is it going to go to so for example a couple numbers that i would toss out of the ones that i've used and the ones that i've heard from other people is um for one year long and this asset is going to be used nationally i would charge five to six thousand dollars if it's going to be international it could be in upwards of ten thousand dollars and up that's what licensing can give you and there's nuances to licensing as well because you the photographer and the videographer have the creative licensing and the copyright of this asset just because they paid you to shoot it that day doesn't mean that they own it that has to be like stated in your contract and you have to make that clear from the get-go so you shot it you own the raw file you own all the raw footage and you edited all this stuff it's your intellectual property so you have control over how much this thing is going to be worth to the client so for one year you could price the single photo of a white sneaker for five thousand dollars for one year and they could use it on billboards they could use it on their social media site they could do whatever they want for one year and if they want to refresh it after that year then you can incur another fee you know i've been actually considering doing a patreon so leave a comment down below to see if i should start a patreon like related to like more business related photography business related stuff 
and um maybe some bts behind the shoots of like some of my gigs um let me know if i should start a patreon all right tip number two for commercial photography is the day rate now i talked about licensing already and how much you could charge for that but that doesn't account for the actual day of of you shooting and stuff so that five thousand ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar stuff is after the fact but the day of the shoot how much do you charge for most of us regular lifestyle portrait photographers we charge anywhere from $100 to $800 to $1,000 for a specific shoot and that could cost up to two hours of our time three hours of our time maybe five if you're like re feeling really ambitious but for commercial photography there is a day rate there's half day rates too so half day rates are usually like three to four hours and full day rates is like six to eight hours sometimes even 10 to 12 you can negotiate the pricing on that as well but the day rate only covers the shooting aspect of it you still have to edit and you still have to give them a certain amount of images and hopefully you determined a certain amount of images for them i hope you didn't do the oh what you see is what you get kind of thing i'm just going to give you a lot of images do not do that in commercial photography they can make a lot more money and a lot more profit off of your assets than you think remember that so make a promise of like you will get five images or ten images and i will edit them i will color correct them and that will be a certain fee for itself too do you want facebook photos do you want um images that are optimized for instagram you could upsell them on that too so for example monday is the shoot my monday shoot for eight hours is twenty five hundred dollars for edits and five images that'll be three thousand dollars for licensing that will be five thousand dollars this is how the price breakdown works in commercial photography and sometimes it could get even more specific this is all very different from your typical portrait session because like there's a lot of money involved and again this is a sliding scale where does your client land because you can't charge everybody fifteen thousand dollars for photos and you can't charge everybody 500 bucks for photos as well so there's this whole like nuanced world that you have to traverse and learn by making mistakes by going high by going low lots of techniques i'll go over in the future there's a lot of assets on youtube as well so please look it up uh, there's there's a ton of people out there who can teach you a thing or two all right so i gave you guys a couple of tips and like this very valuable information uh, but honestly i really want to get to the q a on my instagram that i posted like i think a week ago now because these people have really good questions and i just want to like help people out for uh, their own personal pricing because not everybody's in the commercial world so let's get to that again follow me at who's chris chu if you want to jump in on the next q a whenever that does happen how do you reason an increase in price like a client comes back to you after a few years this is a really good question because as photographers and videographers obviously we're going to be learning more and more after each year and we should be raising our prices especially after you watch this video maybe a year ago you charged 300 dollars for a family shoot for one hour but now you do 500 dollars for an hour and they're like, oh, that's kind of expensive. You used to charge us in the past. I think what really needs to be um, done here is a lot of patience and a lot of kindness because you yourself obviously understand that the money that you're making is going into your side hustle or your livelihood if it's your full-time gig. So I think you really just need to patiently and gently explain like you could say yeah i know i charged like that much back then but now like i've raised my prices because of general inflation and uh, i have better gear now and i've uh, improved in my skills so i feel like this new price tag justifies uh, the skill set that i have now and sometimes they will say like oh yeah that totally makes sense like i respect you and i want to pay you how much you're worth second one would be like oh yeah i get it i understand but i can't afford that right now and that's completely fine like yeah you like lost a client that kind of sucks sometimes but you have to realize like you got to stick to what you're worth don't compromise too much on that don't bend over backwards or else you're just gonna be a doormat for so many people and then there's the worst option which is like i feel like that's really unfair that you raise your prices you need to be more consistent all this other stuff and for those people who just don't understand who are and who are disrespecting you don't mm -mm, don't bark back don't do it as tempting as it is to clap back at clients don't do it i feel like your words hold so much meaning now as a business owner and as a um an entrepreneur freelancer so you have to be able to just let it go and say like sorry um for the price increase but this is what it is now um i hope you find another photographer elsewhere um and stuff like that so don't don't be like too abrasive if they don't understand but that's how I would go about doing this. How do I get into doing paid shoots? I just started. So this is a good question as well. Actually, a lot of people ask this and I feel like it's a really rough transition to do a lot of things for free and to start putting money down um, in the conversation because there's a lot of imposter syndrome that goes on. And again, this is like emotions getting in the way of you 
starting a business and funding your actual like hustle. So the next time that somebody asks you for a shoot, just throw out a price tag right then and there. So say for example, your friends like uh, Jack and Jill uh, email you and saying like, hey, it's Christmas time. Like, uh, can you do a photo shoot for us? And say like, yeah, I can do $100 for an hour. And like, you're just starting out. Um, that's how I would do it. Um, that's how you get into the paid shoot. You just say it, say it straight up. And if they're like, oh, I thought you were going to do this for free. And then you should say like, oh, and this kind of goes back to the previous question. Like, oh no, I charge like for my uh, photography right now. And I'm like just starting to like build up a business. So yeah, it'll be a hundred dollars for an hour or $200 for two hours. So stuff like that. And then again, if they don't respect that, then let it go. If they will respect that, they will pay you. And honestly, a hundred dollars for an hour is really cheap. So, um, yeah, there's that. That's one way you can start. How would you price shoots just on film? No digital. So this is a good question because like half of my content is film, half of my content is digital. And I guess my audience is going to, you know, inevitably reflect that. So I feel like you shouldn't change your pricing at all on film and digital. If your results speak for itself, then you should price what you're worth and price what your results are worth because it doesn't really matter like what medium you use and like how you get to the finish line is is if you can get to that finish line i can give you 80 photos in my digital session and i can give you 80 photos in my medium format decision as well one thing that you do have to consider though is the cost of film you should really like throw that on top of the uh, price tag as well because you want the materials of the film and the scan and development to be covered or else that's going to be eating into your budget so i guess um i need to change my answer that sometimes you do have to price a little bit higher on film because you need your materials covered. You don't want that eating into your paycheck. I'm a videographer, but I'm not sure how to set my prices for projects. So the f unique thing about video versus photo is that no matter what the price tag is for the video, it always takes the same amount of time to like film it and edit it because um, that's just the way it goes. Uh, one thing that I really highly recommend is to define how many revisions the client is allowed to have because Say for example, you're really good at pricing, but you don't know about this like revision clause about your contract. One thing that does happen to a lot of people is that say for example, you charge $5,000 for this video and you give them the first draft and they're like, oh, can you change this, this, and this? So you change it for them and you're like expecting it to be done, but they're like, oh no, actually I want to change this. And then that's the second revision now. And then the, there's going to be a third and there's going to be a fourth. And then like sometimes like this will go on for ages and then it'll, it'll start to get like really petty too, like about like, uh, can you move the font? Uh, just just up by a little this much and uh, oh can you change it to like light blue instead of dark blue then like the revision starts to get really minuscule so to find the amount of revisions that you have and going back to like the first thing that i said that all videos take the same amount of time to make charge a lot higher than you think because um you're only allowed a limited amount of time in a year a year is already like a finite amount of time say for example you only have enough time for 12 videos per year so once a month charge higher $5,000 each and that's like 60k for the whole year and you want to like double that amount but you're like your first instinct is to like double the amount of work that's not sustainable because if you do 24 videos that take up so much time and overlap with each other in terms of like editing time you are going to burn out you're going to fry so just like charge those 12 videos a lot higher how did you find your voice when negotiating prices i struggle asking for higher amounts of money this obviously takes a lot of time and a lot of reps in the game and a lot of like practice to do it but for me personally, and this is like kind of like a unique tailored experience, but I'm just going to share it anyways. But I draw from my experience of like being bullied as a kid uh, growing up and I apply it to myself now as like a mid 20 year old dude who is a business owner. And like I'm playing with big fish now. So at every like first meeting that I have, like whether it's on Zoom now or like in person, I always go in very firm and like not like in a, in a sense that like I'm like stonewalling you and like coming off as like an a-hole I obviously show that I'm very passionate about it but I'm serious They're like don't f with me don't screw with me do not step on me like I'm coming to you and you're coming to me because you think that I can give you assets and I can give you assets so don't step on me kind of thing like I'm very firm like this is my price this is who I am and this is what I can give you you've seen my past work I can do this for you and that's it like that that's my minimum i'm not going to bend over for you kind of thing so that's what works for me in commercials only in commercial business only for weddings and other like personal portraits i'm much more relational like i get to know you and all sorts of stuff but the same amount of confidence is exuded it's just being shown in different ways like relationally when it's when it has to be relational with people 
and businesslike when it has to be businesslike. So even though like I'm a smaller guy, like I'm young and all this other stuff, like I always give off an energy. I'm like, I'm very good at what I do. Do not mess with me kind of thing. All right, this video is probably a really long one. So I'm going to cut it off here. There's a lot more questions that will go in future videos. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. And I really love uh, giving out information like this because you don't really find this uh, everywhere on every corner of YouTube, like from other photographers and videographers. So I just want to help you guys out. Um, I will be starting a Patreon. I don't even know when, but comment down below if you would uh, be interested in seeing what I do on there and if it's even a good idea so uh, make sure you subscribe to this video like it share it with your friends so that they can learn a couple things or two and comment down below whatever you want um it's about to be christmas so merry christmas everybody happy holidays happy new years and uh, i will see you guys and girls in the next video <gasps> peace